Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about B-complex vitamins. B-complex vitamins are cheap and easy to obtain. They don't cost very much money to produce and to sell and to buy, and they are pretty safe in that generally they are water-soluble, so they come out of our bodies fairly quickly. On the other hand, B-complex vitamins can give us a load of, of problems with mental health as well as symptoms that can make us feel pretty bad. So we'd like to talk about some of the B-complex vitamins today. This particular one will be where we talk about the B-complex vitamins for mental health mostly. But one of the things that we'll, we'll, you'll notice is that a lot of your supplements will have B vitamin complexes in them because it's so inexpensive to put them into a product and the companies get a big bang for their buck because people feel invigorated. They get an energy boost. It's a lot like drinking caffeine. So they feel the stimulant oomph and they, they get a big boost from taking the B-complex. What can often happen is uh, I've, I've actually had a number of patients who have complained that they feel their heart is racing, they have high blood pressure and they feel they're sweating and they come in, they think they have a thyroid problem and we look at their supplements and we discover that they're taking four or five products that all have B-complex vitamins in them. Now, B-complex doesn't mean every B vitamin. It just kind of today means a bunch of B vitamins. It doesn't have a standard meaning. So B-complex means more than one B vitamin. So now since there's B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B9, B7, B12, B17, and, and, and on, there are a number, and there's, there's paraminobenzoic acid, which is another B vitamin. There's a bunch of things. Uh, alpha lipoic acid is very similar to the B vitamins. There's a whole, n whole load of stuff. So when a, a product has B complex in it, the most common energy level B complex usually says B50. And, and it means it has a whole bunch of B vitamins in it with a certain dose that's way more than what you need as far as every day. Now, I'm not a person who's against using more than the RDA, and I'm not a person who's against megadosing vitamins in some cases. There is a case to be made for megadosing, which is more than 10 times the RDA technically of a vitamin for an individual for a certain period of time. But I don't just do that willy-nilly without any reason. So when a person has a, a B-complex problem, sometimes they're taking too much B-complex. And, and the biggest culprits of this are the ones that are most likely in the product. This is B12 and this is B6. These are the ones that are just pile-drived into these products. So a, a person may take them and, and feel a great deal of energy. And then if they don't have enough minerals to uh, sustain that level of production, or they're taking just plain too much, they can feel just crazy afterward. And, and it can take um, anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to feel that. And then they'll say, at first it worked, and then, it, and then it made me worse, and I got really tired, and I got really sluggish. But I had really good energy at first. Or I take them, and then I can't sleep at night. That's another very common one. You'll also see a trend toward... Um, not just the standard cyanocobalamin, which is a pretty typical inexpensive B12 in people's supplements, but now a trend toward methylcobalamin. Now, 80% of people are, are under methylators. That means they don't provide the methylation reaction, which is adding a methyl group or a CH3 group to a molecule to make it active. That is a process that's done in metabolism every day by your liver and by other, other organs and by really every cell in your body undergoes some degree of methylation to allow a molecule to be active. Methylation certainly also takes place in the DNA to suppress DNA act activity and kind of, kind of dampen DNA expression and, and keep genes from turning on. So methylation at the gene level is usually a turn, turning off event, and methylation at a, at a more cellular level, a macro level, outside the genes is, is much more of an activation uh, process. But nevertheless, giving methyl B12 or methylcobalamin is not a bad idea for about 80% of people. The problem is that 15 to 20% of people may be over methylators or they may have some other problem uh, that isn't exactly over methylation, but they've got some difficulty with the pathways of methylation where they don't do well with this push. So they don't do well with methyl B12. So they have to take a hydroxy or adenosyl B12 and not the methyl B12, at least for a while. These patients may also need lithium or, or other trace minerals. They may need uh, rubidium. They may need magnesium in that, that family in the periodic table of the elements. If you remember the periodic table of the elements, there are these, these columns, 
and rows. And in, in the columns, there are different electrical charges to the, to the molecules. And in nutrition, magnesium, rubidium, and lithium are all in the same general uh, family and, and column. And so they, they have some, some shared functions and some shared attributes, and they're all vital nutrients, some in much larger amounts like magnesium, and some in vanishingly small amounts like rubidium and lithium. So we're not talking about the medical lithium here, we're talking about just like lithium orotate or lithium aspartate. These are, these are natural you know, forms of safe lithium that can be taken over the counter. We're not talking about a prescription lithium that's given for, say, bipolar disorder. Another thing that you'll see with people that have difficulty with uh, B12 is, is folic acid. They may have SNPs, which we're going to talk about uh, in another episode here, but they may have inherited genes that are SNPs that are mutations that make them unable to tolerate regular folic acid. And so they have to take 5-methylfolate. So I know this sounds crazy because here I just told you that methyl B12 might be bad for some people, and now I'm telling you that not methylating folic acid might be, might be uh, bad for some people. So yes, that's the point. Sometimes methylating of one, one molecule is bad for these people, and methylating another compound is good. And that, that chemistry gets a little complicated. Right here it's not important, but the general gist of it is some people need to get rid of methyl B12, about 15 to 20 percent of the people that come in with mental illness or mental complaints or any kind of psychological phenomena. And then the, um, the folic acid needs to be removed and they need to have varying amounts of, of 5-tetramethyl hydrofolate, which is available over the counter and it's, it's slightly more expensive and, and it's certainly in a lot of supplements. And one of the things people will do is they'll, they'll take the MTHFR gene test and they'll test only one gene instead of looking at the big picture and they will decide to, to switch from folic acid to methylfolate, 5-tetramethyl five, five hydrofolate, and they will take too much of it and they will feel crazy. So it's important to realize that when you do that switch, don't take massive amounts of, of the 5-methylfolate. Um, it, can, it can really overdrive a system, even though it's the right molecule, it can be too much. The next B vitamin that's, that's not talked about very much is vitamin B5, pantothenic acid or pantothene. Vitamin B5 is an undersung vitamin because it doesn't give you boosts of energy. It doesn't, it doesn't kick you in the pants like, a, like B12 or B6 can do. And in fact, many times I have to take people off B6 for weeks to calm them down and, and clear them out and have them drink lots of water and, and flush it out of their body. B5 is, is really the main vitamin for, um, one of the main vitamins for the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands rest just above our kidneys uh, back here, um, and they're just about two fingers wide, and they can be inflamed. B5 really helps restore the inflammatory effect of those adrenal glands. I tend to start in adults with 500 milligrams and work my way up to, you know, for just a month, maybe four weeks, to like 1,000 or 1,500, and sometimes even 2,000 milligrams a day for adults that are under a great deal of stress. They don't stay on this forever, but it's a very useful regimen that can help a person overcome an adrenal exhaustion and, and inflamed adrenal glands. Please remember to hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel if you like what you see and you want more of it. We need to talk about niacin and niacinamide, which is vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 is extremely important in human health and it is one of the most unsung vitamins of all. It can help men deal with aggression and it can help women deal with aggression. It is very useful for helping with mental illness. Uh, it, it's, it's been used in depression and schizophrenia. It's been used to, to, to quelch both sides of the over and under methylation pathway. It's, it's the only vitamin that will help both sides of that. Niacin and niacinamide can help both sides of that equation, which is pretty cool. Niacin is the flush form of, of vitamin B3, and niacinamide is the no flush form. And there's other forms like, you know, hexaniacinate and, and various types of, of niacin and niacinamide. But the general gist is niacin itself, even at 10 milligrams, will make a person just flush like a beet and they will look as though they've gotten a sunburn and they're sweaty and hot and they look like they're having a heart attack. It lasts about five minutes and you think you're going to die, but you're not. It, it happens to people that take niacin on an empty stomach and maybe are also a little dehydrated. It will give them a rapid pulse and flush and itch. They'll scratch themselves and itch. Their upper body will usually flush. Their chest, their arms, their hands, their face, their neck will flush red and their heart will pound and they will just be hyperventilating and sweating. It's often used by doctors that want to do a holistic method for helping with cholesterol. Now, there's many, many ways to deal with cholesterol, but one of the ways of lowering cholesterol in the past, and it's not a bad idea, was using niacin. Now, 
when I do that work, I do many other things, including dietary changes that have to do with carbohydrates and fats and proteins and ketogenic diets and all kinds of stuff and measuring blood levels. But the basic idea of niacin and niacinamide was people were taking a, a, a bolus of maybe 500 to 1,000 milligrams at a time in the morning on an empty stomach, and they would just flush like crazy. So the good news is if you make a mistake and you do take niacin uh, you can, and you get the flush, you can stop it with water and food. Just eat some water, eat some food, it'll, it'll flush it right out and stop it pretty quickly. And even if you don't, it'll stop within five to seven minutes. So rarely do people need to be hospitalized or anything, and, uh, and it's, it's a little scary, but it's not, it's not damaging to most people. Niacinamide, however, is something that's given quite a lot, and it's very safe. Some people who are quite deficient in niacinamide or niacin will flush from niacinamide. They will take a small amount of, of niacinamide, and they will flush, and you're not supposed to. So if a person flushes from niacinamide, they're pretty deficient in, in many cases. The symptoms are, again, the same thing as niacin, but smaller. They might feel flushing, they might feel headache, they might feel warmth in their neck and head. And uh, the benefits of taking niacin and niacinamide, aside from the cholesterol benefits, are that their mental health pathways usually get quite a bit better. People will feel better from depression and anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar. These are not medical claims that they're going to cure or treat these diseases. They're just supportive, supportive care for an individual to restore their brain balance. Many people will take, you know, two and 3,000 milligrams of niacinamide. I, I tend to use 500 uh, for my patients. Typically, I don't use a lot more than that. These are extremely useful for, for stimulating the acetylcholine pathway that will keep blood vessels open. So niacinamide and niacin are involved in manufacturing acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that will help your autonomic nervous system use nicotinic uh, receptors to open blood vessels and allow a person to have good circulation. We, we use this in people that have dementia that's due to blood vessel constriction. There are a number of people that have cold hands, cold feet, cold nose, cold ears. They don't have a thyroid disorder. Their temperature is fine, but they've got cold extremities and poor circulation and really poor vasodilation. So we use um, things that support the acetylcholine pathway, which are niacin and niacinamide for that, and we have to do it carefully and judiciously. So that's B3. That's B B12, B6, B3, and there will be others for us next time. <laughs>